respected and honored my brothers and elders. You know, in San, our condition change changes throughout different stages of our life. Yani, ek insan ki halat badalte rehte hain. It, they don't always stay the same. Sometimes you're going to have highs, sometimes you're going to have lows. This is part and parcel of how the world works, okay? What, one thing what social media has done is that every single individual, they capture their best moments and put those online. So they always show you the happiness, they always show you the best pictures, the best smiling faces. The reality is, is that what people don't know is that that took 10 attempts to get it perfect before they actually put it online. Okay, so we're in this zamana now, we're in this time, this era, this, this uh, phase of history where what happens is, is that we have the ability to put those things out into the public which seem perfect. Honestly, right, you have all these celebrities and these big, big people who have great followings and they all complain of having, de- not all, a lot of them have complained of having depression, anxiety and all these things. Where we fall for it, where we fall for it is that we think that they have a perfect life. So you might have someone who has exceptionally amount of large money, uh, amount of money, but yet they think of themselves, uh, and us, we look at them and think they have such a perfect life, but they're far from that. I had a meeting with one individual, I don't want to mention too much because obviously it's private. And this much I will say is I was saying to him that many a people, they present such a great face outside. It's actually called a facade in English, a face that you present yourself as perfect. But when the person lays down in bed at night, they cry themselves to sleep because they wish they could be someone else because they hate who they really are. The person then said this statement, he goes, how did you know my life? He's a person that earns maybe 150,000 pounds a year, multiple properties, good couple of sports cars, married kids, everything, but he does not like who he is. So if he goes now from 50 grand more to now he goes 200 grand, He's still not going to find happiness. How about quarter of a million? How about 300 grand? I mean, when does it come a point in the person's life where he says, Alhamdulillah, I'm happy? When? Happiness has to come from within. This is why the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, لَيْسَ الْغِنَاءَ أَنْ كَثْرَةِ الْعَرَضِ وَلَكِنَّ الْغِنَاءَ غِنَى النَّفْسِ Having many of the furnishings of the dunya is not going to make you happy. It's not happiness. True, ha- true wealth. True ha- wealth is what? That you feel happy. You have content. You feel happy within yourself. That is what you call real wealth. Now where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came obviously to instruct us and tell us that look, halat and conditions will come. Things will have, we'll have our highs, we'll have our lows, okay? I've met a couple of people and you hear this, why did Allah do this to me? Why did Allah choose me? Why did Allah test me? Why is Allah testing me? Well, what do you expect? Do you expect everything to go okay in your life? Everything? How, okay. How about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What did he do for the sake of deen? He was the one who bought the, 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 the deen, Qur'an, the Islam, everything. Well, look at the halat in his life. All his male children died. Enemy, I mean, the, the people of Makkah who grew up with him as family became his enemies. He was persecuted, boycotted. You know, he was also beaten at a place like Taif and so on. There's so much of a history. But yet never once did he ever turn around and say, Oh Allah, why are you doing this to me? I, I, I spread your message. I gave you, I'm the one, I'm giving people the Quran. Na'uzubillah, nothing like this. Because he knew happiness and sadness comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, you know, Ahwal will change, things will change. You're never going to have one steady, smooth ride. You're going to have your ups and downs. So one month, mashallah, halat are good. Next month, they may be not so good. One week you're feeling really happy within yourself, next week you may not be feeling happy within yourself. The heart goes up and down, your feelings go up and down. You know even the heart, the word in Arabic actually is called qalb. Qalb in Arabic, right? From the same word you have inqilab, taqlib. Taqlib means to flip something. Inqilab, you know what inqilab is, right? So those of you who want to know Urdu, it's like a whole revolution, a complete change. Why? Because the old goes to the new. And then there's another revolution that gets out, and then there's something else in you. So there's constant changes. Heart is the same. It constantly changes. It's never firm on one particular theme. It's always changing. It's important to understand this is because when we look at Ramadan, we look at Ramadan through the eyes of a secular view. So we think to ourselves, fasting, why is it I have to fast? Why am I depriving myself? Why am I I not giving myself this, this, this? 
food and drink. Why is Allah making me do this? Nawazubillah. What you don't realize there is actually so many, and I'm going to talk about this inshallah another week, We've just when Ramadan starts, of the benefits of fasting. Wallah, there's so many from a science point of view, even though we don't need science to validate our faith for us, but wallah, there's so much that if you understood the, the benefit of it, you would say fasting should be more. But nevertheless, it's Allah's kindness that He gave us this. But khair, what I want to focus on, like I said, is one aspect, and that is the aspect just of sabr and patience. Just to understand patience. It's something small. We hear it. Sabr, sabr, sabr. But what does it mean? Generally, when we hear a sabr, we, what is the first thing that comes to our mind? You broke a leg, but you make sabr. One guy, right, his father passed for someone and oh, he, he just make sabr, just make sabr. Well, of course I'm making sabr. Yeah, but what, what does it mean by making sabr? Okay, so like I said, right, is that sabr are basically are three types. You have a sabru ala al-masaib, a sabru ala ta'ad, a sabru an ma'asillah, or an al-ma'asi. So we have three types or three levels or three categories of sabr per se. Number one, which is the common, generally understood one. So how many categories of sabr are there? Three. Okay, good. So we're all following. Three. Number one, what we generally refer to as sabr is a sabru ala al-masaib. So patience in the face of adversity. You're afflicted with something, patience. You break a leg, as an example, patience. You physically harm, patience. Financially harm, patience. Mentally harm, patience. These are what we generally refer to as a sabr or sabr. Okay? And understand these halat go up and down. And there may be, in your understanding, no logical reason why it should be happening, but this is all the system and the nizam of Allah. Okay? Now remember one thing, and now this is the, the litmus test to test whether it's beneficial or not. If you have a musibah that comes, a difficulty that comes, a test which comes and it draws you closer to Allah, then that test was really beneficial. Why is it beneficial? Because why are you sent in this world? For which reason? To earn the pleasure of Allah. So by having a musibah, if you turn to Allah, oh, Alhamdulillah. You know, going back a little while ago, there was this guy, I don't know if you guys followed it, but he actually died of cancer, a brother from Australia. Multi-millionaire guy But then he was afflicted with cancer He developed cancer And then he passed away And when someone asked him and interviewed him What have you got? He goes, Alhamdulillah, you know, I have cancer Alhamdulillah, the grace of Allah And what, let me make this very clear A Muslim, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal We praise Allah in all conditions Meaning, not that I ask for musibah I don't ask for taklif But if it comes, all praise be to Allah He knows what's best do you understand the difference? We're not thanking Allah, like, Allah sent more musibah. Of course not. But when a musibah, a difficulty, affliction comes, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal, I praise you in all conditions. Whether if it's sarra wa darra, in happiness, in, in, in misfortune, in, in, dis, in, 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 in good, in bad, in affluence, in poverty, I'll always make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Allah. Because if one thing has gone, Allah has given us other things. Let's just say financially you suffered for whatever reason, but physically, mashallah, you're very healthy. Someone physically may uh, suffer, but financially he's very well off, or vice versa. Or someone, for example, phys physically is okay, but mentally not well. Someone mentally well, but physically not well. Everyone, I'm telling you, by Allah, no one, no one on the face of this earth, nobody who you look at has a perfect life. There is no such thing as a perfect life. Everyone you see, by oxen billah, they're going to go through some form and shape of difficulty. What happens is, because you're going through a certain difficulty, you seem to think, why is that person not going through that? Why is he not going through that? Why me? Because you can't see what they're going through, but you're going through your own challenge. They're going through their own challenge. Someone, for example, may have their bag of issues, you have your bag of issues. Nobody, nobody is test free. Remember that. Just because we see some mashallah pulling up in an expensive car, looking all good, trust me, if that person is going to sleep at night thinking to themselves, I hate who I am, I cannot stand to look at myself in the mirror, I always have this negative thought about myself, then money and cars meant nothing to you. And I'm telling you, because I, I work with this, I work with this, trust me. People who are thinking of us, why should you, like from a worldly point of view, how and why should you be sad? Let me give you another example. A few years back, there was this uh, football um, manager. I forgot which team it was, and I don't want to misquote it, but it was somewhere up north in the Midlands area. He was the manager for a football team. Now imagine he's Tanha, right? I mean, these mans earn stupid money. He earned a lot of money, and they showed his house. He had cars, mashallah, beautiful family. 
and he committed suicide. This happened about seven, eight years ago. It makes you think of what the heck was going on in that guy's brain. From a worldly point of view, financially very successful, had a family and kids. He had money, cars, you're a manager of a football team. It's quite ironic, right, is because there was one particular actor who starred in a film as a counsellor to help someone with their depression. He killed himself because of depression. How ironic it is. As an act, you can act all good for the camera, but he goes and kills himself because of depression. Don't be fooled by Allah, don't be fooled. And you yourself as a person, you're going through your halat. Someone else is going through their halat. Why do I know this? It's because Allah told us, we're definitely, most definitely going to test you. Fear, hunger, depreciation of wealth, loss of life. Loss of fruits, and here ulama mentioned two opinions for loss of fruits. It may mention physical fruits, but meaning the ones we grow on trees. Another type of fruit, which is your children, because they're the fruits of your life. It can happen, and it does happen, and it will continue to happen because Allah is testing each and every individual. However, remember one thing. Allah afflicted you, or sent a difficulty, or tested you, but He knew what you could bear. Allah won't, if you can run not to, if you can run 1 to 100 in 15 seconds, Allah's not going to divide, uh, Allah's not going to demand that you know you have to make it in 10 or 11 or 12. If you can go 15, He's going to literally take you to 15 and a half, literally pushing you to your very limit. But He's not going to push you where you top over and flop. Allah knows everyone's capacity. Okay, so this is why one thing we always have to understand that different halat and, and difficulties will always come. There was once this woman, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, مَرَّ نَبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ بِإِمْرَاءَ تَبْكِي عِنْدَ قَبْرٍ He ﷺ passed by one qabr, and this woman was shedding tears. So what happened was, is that he said to her, he said, uh, Oh, such and such a lady, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and make, make, meaning, adopt taqwa, adopt taqwa. There's nothing wrong with crying, but she was wailing and sobbing. You know how they're like, I went to this one fodgi once in the village, and they actually, ugh, ajeeb. They hired people. Hajj sahab, they gave people money. Ketum au or ro. Kyu? Because when people are crying loud, they're going to say, Jibari for the you see. Like, look at the mizaj. I, I really, I did not know what the heck, what, I just couldn't fathom that. One minute, you paid people to come and make no ha at your, at your funeral. What? I, I was speechless. I thought, that is jahiliya at its utmost. Because then people say, Nini, he, they was an, a very important person. You see how the people were crying. No, Ajib, I don't understand these, these thinking. But nevertheless, some, some, the more you're apparently supposed to cry, but this is actually against Islam. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, no ha and screaming in this way at the time of a, of, of a fodgi is actually the thing of jahiliyyah. You know, the people used to tear clothes, hit faces, and start doing like matam and stuff. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that individual is not even from us. There's a hadith as well. Well, like I said, we have no time to go into the details, but just there is a hadith on this. So this woman, he passed by, she was wailing and sobbing. So he said, look, adopt taqwa, meaning do the right thing, not the wrong thing, and have sabr. And then she mentions to him, she says to him, إِنَّكَ لَمْ تُصَبِّ مُصِيبَةِ You've not been afflicted by what I have. So she said to him, go, go, go away from here. Go from here. She was crying. She hadn't realized it was the Prophet ﷺ who actually was speaking to her. Afterwards, she had an ihsas, like, oh, that was, that was the Prophet ﷺ. Now, imagine someone did that to us, right? We'd say, hey, don't you dare who you're talking to. I'm this and this person. That like, we'd actually take offense. The Prophet ﷺ, tahammul, his sabr was such, he said, let her, it's okay. Stepped out of the situation. So then she went. Not to, uh, came to the door and then requested to speak to him and she said that I'm sorry I didn't know it was you and he mentioned that as-sabr عند الصدمة الأولى sabr you know we say in Urdu بعد ما تو آهي جاتا ہے sabr will come like but it's how you react in that moment now mashallah what happens is that some people are afflicted with something and they make muhas when they think look Allah gave it Allah took it Allah knows best Alhamdulillah Allah knows best I, 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 wouldn't, I don't want it to go, but Allah knows best. That's sabr. But to freak out in the beginning, after one or two weeks, but sabr will come anyway. That's not sabr now. That's you've come to the realization that it's gone. So sabr is instantly when you've got a difficulty, you make sabr then. Okay? 
So then what happened was he mentioned as sabru in the sadmatul ula. Sabr is when the first affliction comes. As soon as a musibah comes, how do re you react? Do you go crazy, wild out, go all out? Or no, do you calm down? And then it's, it's, e by, listen, it's easier said than done. It's easier said than done, okay? I, I know it's not easy because there are different insecurities and different things we all have. Let's just say someone has a real insecurity around wealth. And you call them and say to him, bro, you got nothing, you're a poor man, look at you, you're a waste man. He's going to fly off the hook. Let's just say someone have a subject to a bit of racism. You say a racist comment to them, he's or she's going to fly off, on the hook, off the hook. So everyone's got their own insecurities. But at that time, when you're afflicted and you make sabr and you're patient, you step back a bit, take a deep breath and you thank Allah that, look, Allah, you know what's best. And then that is when real sabr happens. It mentions, right, and I've only touched upon the first type of sabr here, as-sabr عند البلاء. Al Masaib, Sabr upon difficulties. There's one particular shara of hadith, right, which actually is like a commentary, Dalilul Falihin. It mentions this under the commentary, right, of the of the hadith on Sabr. If a person were to come to know, if you knew what Allah would give you for making Sabr, on the day of judgment, you would say, Ya Allah, I wish in the dunya my body had been cut up with scissors. When you see the ajr what Allah will give you, you'll say, Ya, why didn't I have more musibah in the dunya? Every difficulty you have, it mentions in the hadith, any difficulty you have, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الْخَيْرِ Whenever Allah wants from, uh, from His servant any type of good, عَجَّلَ لَهُ الْعَقُوبَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَإِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدِهِ الشَّرْ أَمْسَكَ عَنْهُ بِذَنْبِهِ حَتَّى يُوَافَ بِهِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ If Allah wants good with you, He wants good for you, He will sometimes afflict you in this worldly life. In this worldly life. And when he actually wants shar for you, he'll withhold everything. So don't be fooled if you see someone with a so-called perfect life. There, something is in store for them in the akhirah. Don't be fooled by the glitter and the glamour. This hadith in Tirmidhi is not even some, something I've just conjured up at the top of my head. Hadith in Tirmidhi. Okay? And then the Prophet ﷺ mentions another thing as well. If you do have difficulty, let's just say two people, one has more than the other. Should you lose hope? No. The Prophet ﷺ mentions that such a thing will happen if a person keeps and gets afflicted with things, <coughs> be they a mu'min or a mu'mina, a believer, a man, believing man or a believing female. What will happen if they're afflicted in their nafs, their children, their wealth, anything along these lines? They will meet Allah on the day of Qiyamah, not even one sin will be left in their account. So I ask you a question. If you go through difficulty, no, no one wants to lose a business, yad. You tried so hard, 10 years, you put Eri Jodi Zor and sweat in there and family life in there, and then to become bankrupt. No one wants to do that. But then if you took that with sabr and said, look, Allah knows best, I, I can start again. It's okay, I can start again. A child passes away, an elder passes away, a relative passes away, someone who you're very close with passes away. You yourself, one week you're okay, next week you're afflicted with a condition, an illness, something goes wrong. It's okay. Allah knows what's best, and if I can just be sub make patience, ma ya ma ya zalul balau bil mu'min wal mu'mina fi nafsihi wa waladihi wa mali hatta wa mali hatta yalqa Allah wa ma alihi khatiya. If these afflictions keep on afflicting you, you will meet Allah on the day of Qiyamah. There will be no guna in your account whatsoever. Asal kamyabi is this. That's why. Why do we get this difficulty? Because our nazar shifts. It shifts. From that objective, which Rasulullah came with, we've made our objective too much this worldly life. That's why this happens. But does everybody understand where I'm coming from? Why do we feel sad when things happen go wrong? Our nazar is too much on this world. If, we, if we're thinking always of the akhir, we would, it's not that we don't welcome it. Don't get me wrong. We don't want things to come our way. We don't want musibah to come. But if it comes, sabr and patience. In that, by Allah is your turkey in deen and akhir, in dunya and akhirah. So may Allah give us the tawfiq and the ability to make amal and practice, inshallah. Like I said, there's only one aspect. The other two aspects, inshallah, which I'll just touch on literally in 30 seconds. Sabr and patience in fulfilling the commands of Allah. And number three, sabr in and patience in abstaining from those things which are haram. And what do we mean by that? If you wake up in the morning, summertime, four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, it's not easy to wake up and wash your face, hands of it, and pray fajr namaz. It's difficult, isn't it? Who said Ramadan is going to be easy? It's not, it's going to have its challenge, I say not, it's not hard, it's going to have its challenges. But then that will draw you close to Allah, that spirituality, that connection. That's what we're supposed to be achieving. In addition to that, 
No, everyone wants to have the high life. We all want to chill out, buzz out, flex out, have fun. Speak to our youth. There is plenty of fitna searching. But what happens is, is that we make sabr in doing those things and to abstain from those things are haram because we know that will please Allah. This is also a form of sabr. So we touched upon the first thing. There are two more, but we'll finish here because time has gone on. We make Allah dua to Allah. He give us tawfiq and the ability to practice and make amal and whatever has been said, inshallah. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq and the ability also to abstain from the evil and bring with us the khair wa akhir da'wan. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala, Nabi Muhammad wa sallam. Oh, 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 oh.